Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos. Uh, thank you so much for the time. Uh, Alan, I wanna start with you and obviously big thank you for all of the amazing inclusive programming that you have made and that you continue to make. But I wanna ask you with this film, knowing that it's semi-autobiographical, you know, inspired by some of your own experiences, what was it like to go back into that time when you know times were different, times were tough, especially in the South? How emotional was it for you? Uh, it was pretty emotional. I mean, the whole process of, of how this movie came into existence, uh, how I came about to write it and then shooting it, and it's been emotional from the get-go uh, because it is, it is personal in a lot of ways. And uh, I have to admit, um, I cried when I wrote it. I cried when I saw the uh, um, the editor's first assembled cut. Um, I cried uh, when Paul shot his scene at the grave, uh, at Sam's grave. I cried watching it. Uh, so it, it is emotional, but it's a good kind of emotional. It's like, uh, it, it, it means it's meaningful. It means, and hopefully, you know, if it's meaningful to me and meaningful to us who made the movie, hopefully it will be meaningful to audiences when they watch it. It's a beautiful film. Paul, you are uh, Uncle Frank. Uh, so for you, what was it like for you to get a look into life in this early 70s in America, in the South, for w being a gay person? Were you? What was it like to kind of get into that world and see what it was like? Um, it, you know, I, I mean, let's take it let's take them separately. I, I, I grew up in the, I, sort of, I was born in 1971. I grew up in the seventies and I then became fascinated with American 1970s cinema, 1970s and early eighties. And which is sort of for me, the golden era of uh, American cinema. And I know it is for Alan, too so and and but moreover we're sort of inundated in in, in England with um, uh, American culture you know uh, so so that 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 didn't feel as alien to me as if I was being asked to uh, you know uh, play somebody who was an Africana from 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 from, from, from you know in in South Africa you know. The, that 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 felt very um i felt very actually knowledgeable about uh, that and as far as being a gay man we 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 alan and i talked a lot about this i fell in love with the script the moment i read it and i the first thing out of my mouth when we spoke was why me and why and can i and and what is there that i is there a compelling reason for something that I can bring to the to the role that makes it um, that, 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 that where I can be helpful? And I was, um, and we, I think we found some pretty good answers to, to those questions, and we were really frank about them. And I, I you know, I, I was raised by a, a closeted gay man who came out at sixty three, much to the relief of my entire family, and. And he then had a, um, a 20 year relationship with a man called Andy, who I strongly believe was actually the love of his life. And then when Andy died, my father who was Catholic um, uh, was so full of shame uh, that he went back in the closet and we had some very difficult conversations where he refused to acknowledge that he had ever been gay. And um, it, it really rubbed him of the ability to be able to uh, mourn the, 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 the passing of his, his lover. Now, when my father died, I was with him and in his pocket, I found a, 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 a glass vial this big of Andy's ashes. And um, so for me, it was, it was an exercise in imagining what if my father hadn't been crippled by this dogma and, and, and shame that he felt regarding uh, uh, who, he, who, who, he, who he was and, uh, and his sexual identity. And I often wonder what he and I would have been. 
discipline. Um, because of course there is a, a cost to any relationship if you're being dishonest within that relationship. And I, 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 so, so being able to imagine a world in which my father uh, got right with himself and accepting of himself was, 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 was really edifying for me. And, and, and uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm now, I'm, I don't know if I'm being eloquent or stupid, but have I answered your question? No, it's a beautiful story. And I so appreciate you sharing it. And um, you know, I'm out of time, but the film is so wonderful. We loved it at Sundance and we're so happy that it's out. So congratulations to you both. And I hope to see you in person at some time soon. Yeah, maybe one day. Thank you so much. I hope so too. Yeah, thank you. It's such a great film. I loved it. This film really is about, you know, creating an evolving acceptance, acceptance for the LGBTQ community. So what is it you hope that people watch this, you know, take away from it? Well, I think uh, there's still so much more work to be done. And I think that, you know, we keep making movies about this because we keep needing to deal with this issue and deal with acceptance and equality and, um, you know, healthcare and all of those, all of those concerns that that really like affect the LGBTQ and trans community. And so, um, so that's how that's why I feel these movies are important. And and for people who who don't live in a very accepting environment or in a very accepting family, to know that there there are other people out there that they have a community that they're people who struggle with this too, and that you know that it's okay. I mean you know, we worry so much about the suicide rate with um, uh, the LGBTQ and trans teenagers specifically um, because the rate is so incredibly high for these kids. And, and so that's a real issue. And, and I know that when people can watch movies and stories like this, it can really make them feel like it's their voice as well. And that they're, that they have uh, an accept, they, there is a community out there for them. That would be my hope anyway. Yes, absolutely. Um, Lois, if I may jump to you, you know, have, did you ever witness or experience any sort of the homophobia that's depicted in the film? Did you ever see anything like that ever happen? Oh my goodness, when when I was very young, which is a long time ago, it, um, it in a, at least where I grew up, it wasn't even a subject. And if it became a subject, it was so forbidden. Um, you know, I'm sure that wasn't true everywhere, but that was my first experience of the subject, actually. Um, and so it's a long trip, a long journey from, from that until, until, until nowadays. And there's mm -hmm. still, you know, it's interesting because th there is connection in any family with and, and I guess the point is the connections are there. So isn't it much better if they can be gentle and kind? Absolutely. Otherwise there's gonna be an awful lot of, of grief and pain. Yeah. Yes, and uh, also go ahead, I guess no, please. I, well, I was just gonna say about three weeks ago, um, a gay couple I'm friends with were just told to leave a convenience store in Oregon that they wouldn't be helped. And that was three weeks ago in 2020. That's a, in that's Oregon, a, like they were, they were like, we are not, we're not serving you in this store. Well then what, what do you think is the, the solution? I mean, to, when, when we hear that things are happening in 2020 like that, what, Judy, what do you think is, you know, what, what can we do? Uh, I, I think we have to keep making art about this. We have to keep fighting for this. We have to keep talking about it. We have to keep accepting people. We have to keep educating people. Um, and, and that's why I think that, you know, I'll say it again, that movies and stories like this are so important. You know, we told a story that took place in 1973, but it's 2020 and this kind of thing is still happening, you know, and, and certainly like Lois got to witness it, unfortunately, firsthand and, and the silence around it. And now that, you know, we're, we're trying not to be silent about it, you know, then there comes other repercussions. So um, there's just a lot of work to still be done. Absolutely. Lois, I'm going to wrap up with you. Um, you know, thinking back, because I'm thinking about your amazing performance in The Inheritance, obviously, you know, was there, do you remember 
maybe was there someone that you met, you know, a gay friend or or someone that came into your life that made you say that you wanted to support the LGBTQ community? You know, I I I had some gay friends when I was growing up in Seattle and in school, but I've lived in New York ever since my very early 20s and and have right away many many gay friends. So there was <laughs> You know, that's that's another thing. If only one can know, know people, then the fear and the goes away. It's it's um, it's it's ignorance and f fear of something that you don't know what, what you're afraid of, even. And as I feel very fortunate to have have had after after a a young childhood of, of, of total ignorance of, to having a full, a full life of, of, of gay friends. Well, that's so wonderful and it was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think I've got to wrap up, but the film's so wonderful. Thank you both for making it and I hope to talk to you really soon. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks Thank for you. what you do. I want to start with, with you, Peter. I can only imagine some of the similarities and the experiences that you shared and identified with, with your character. So emotionally, what was that like to kind of play this role? It was great to play him because, uh, uh, because contrary to belief, he's very different from me. Uh, you know, his positive energy, his, his uh, you know, he's like sunshine. He's just very optimistic, very strong, very hopeful, very supportive of Frank. You know, all these great qualities that one should learn from. So uh, that was that was challenging to play. And it was great as well, because it was one of those few roles that come my way that are not like, you know, uh, a terrorist or like a thug or, you know, a henchman or whatever. So it was kind kind of nice to have him the Eastern character portrayed uh, this way. It was, it felt very refreshing. Absolutely. So, uh, Sophia, let me go down to you. Um, you know, I was thinking with this movie set in the seventies in the South, you being younger, growing up in a completely different time, what was it like for you to get a look into what the world was like for someone who was gay in the South in the seventies? Uh, yeah, no, it was definitely eye opening and it's definitely, uh, well, there is some similarities to now, um, but I feel like, um, especially my generation, uh, one thing I love about it, it's, it's very uh, active and very open and very accepting. So uh, I feel like we have somewhat improved. <laughs> which is good. Which is an improvement. That's good. Uh, it did make it, but being in um, what I love about acting is that you get to be in someone else's shoes and it's not only, you know, a different person, but it's in like a different time and a different place in a different area. I get, you know, and getting to be this uh, girl in the seventies uh, born in South Carolina, it's such a different life. It, it's completely different from, you know, being in, in the 2000, early two thousands and you know, living in New York city. Um, it's, it's incredibly different and in a way I feel kind of lucky, <laughs> which is bad, but <laughs> it's true. I, 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 I'm glad I'm, I was born now and, um, uh, cause it's, it's, it's so different, but we've improved in, in at least a little bit and getting the opportunity. I, I don't think I would have, um, had as much opportunity now in this industry if I was born in the seventies. Absolutely. I, I, I hear you, Peter, um, you know, with your character, we see some struggles with family and coming out and the, the acceptance there. Did you share any of those experiences on your end with your own personal experience? Um, well, I mean, I, I'm close to my family. I'm close Great. to my mom. And that's something that Wally is for sure. So uh, my mom means a lot to me. We have a very close relationship, my family in general. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that that's, that's you know, uh, that's part of the experience, I guess. I mean, Wally doesn't come out to his family. Right. He wouldn't. I mean, Wally is Muslim and he's from Saudi Arabia, which is a very uh, conservative country, to say the least. So uh, definitely I'm from Lebanon and, you know, I consider myself to be cosmopolitan and international and whatnot. So it's not similar in that regard. But gotcha. 
some of some of the characteristics are yes absolutely sophia what is it you hope that people take away from this film um well the one of the main messages is be who you want to be uh without um despite what other people tell you uh to be and uh that's I, that's kind of another way of saying the quote uh, that uh, uh, that uh, Frank told me when I was a kid and I tell him later on. Um, and it's, it's true. It's, it's something that I always constantly have to tell myself to be who I be, be who I want to be. And not despite what other people tell me to be, and just to not compare myself to others is another way of um, looking at it. And um, uh, I feel like it's a really important message um, it's, it's, it's hard to do that, you know, it's, it's, but it's, it gives you the confidence to be who you want to be. Thank you both so much for the time. Um, congratulations. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Anthony. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you too, by the way.